Welcome back to the Salty Show, and welcome back to our Pomeroy campaign on Total War Rome 2 Empire Divided. Episode 12, I want to say. I, I did literally just look at it. Yes, episode 12. Hope you guys are doing well today, and if you are, like and subscribe as always. But without further ado, to catch you up to speed, in case you didn't watch the last couple episodes, we've gone on a massive campaign, finally securing Asia Minor in its entirety, marking the end of our uh, stalemate there and allowing Zenobia and her legions to march east and finally aid the desperate and uh, ongoing slogging defense of our eastern border in Mesopotamia, which is the hotbed of probably the coming battles that we're going to see this episode. I'm really hoping they trigger us at Dora Europus with this Bactrian army. Uh, I don't think they will because they understand. They see that they're not going to win it. But for sure, we're going to have a battle at Hatra, as the Shah himself, once again, is leading a uh, mighty host of ever-increasing strength in Persian forces with some immortal infantry lying about in some of these armies. Ready for battle. Thankfully, we have a strong range contingent, a solid pike wall, and a good number of vigilates to bolster. Unfortunately, we cannot rely on the garrison too much, as they are the uh, consistent target of all of these useless agents. Speaking of agents, we are sending our uh, patrician, actually, to Sestifon to see if we can start instigating some cultural riots. As uh, Petra, we are going to lose our dominance, I think, culturally, which will impact us somewhat politically, I believe. Minus one, so it's only minus one. So to go up to, like, minus six, potentially, but so... It would affect us there, but we can potentially invest in like a shrine or something. And most of all, the m really important bit that we learned in the last episode, which is why we are recruiting forces in the Legion of Septimus, that we're going to pull them from vacation, is because there's the potential that Sakistan is sailing around Arabia Felix and is trying to hit our extremely soft underbelly. I have done off camera though, I have united in defensive alliances almost every single faction to our, actually every faction to our south and most of the Arabian Peninsula has been united with us except Sabah and the Garhe people. Everyone else stands with Pomni. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any of them to join the war with us. However, that consistent tick of negative influence against them will increase our chances as time goes on, potentially drawing them into a battle. But for now, we will unfortunately be on our own. And if we can secure these regions without having to crush them, I think I will be okay with that because we have a lot of battles on our hands. Going against the Eastern Empire is going to take, you know, all our resources for the entirety of the game. And that is with the strong potential that we end up having to go to war with Gallic Rome, which is definitely the Rome that's come out on top. Aurelius is Rome. His capital is at Gorgia now on an island. They they are struggling and they're struggling bad they own a couple of sporadic regions but as the empire itself it is completely gone the roman empire or the roman pretenders still stand around on the islands surrounding italy but gallic rome is definitely the mightiest force as they are now pushing into Hispania and reclaiming that for their empire numidia the governor of numidia has come out pretty strong too but uh it'll be interesting to see how things further develop but that is pretty far from our concerns, as um, we've got plenty. Now, I was waiting, and I was hoping we could get some public order increases, but I know his trapezos here doesn't have any form of garrison, meaning I'm really hoping we can just walk in and claim it. And we are going to do so. Indeed, we can. Minus 21. It's going to be two turns, but that should be positive next turn. Yeah, Trapezos gives us some food. Let's go ahead and demolish that and we can actually get a edict there. But who did it give that? Latin family. So the Latin families own that area. The Latin families are the ones that we need more support in actually. So that is perfect. Plus 10 loyalty. That'll put it in the positive. Unfortunately, I would love to increase our influence, but we're going to have to just maintain a very balanced political situation until then. So that does expand us quite a bit. I'm curious. It didn't take us over 
We're close. We're really close. And if we do that, we are going to get another minus 5, plus 15% public order penalties. Upkeep cost goes up. So we're rather close to, unfortunately, suffering some more negatives. We're doing okay for now, though. So with that, we are going to allow Zenobia, I think, to try to maintain Bithynia, because we do need its public order to fix itself. Um, and its sanitation, too. Which that will go away, actually. So we are going to work on that, leaving the Legion of Yahrib here to uh, try to continue the assault against Armenia. But we do at least border them, and we have really pushed them into the back of the corner. If Zenobia can come in from the north here and sweep down this way, that's really going to take the Sassanids by surprise. But I've been putting it off long enough. I think it's time we end the turn and see what the enemy do. With that, I am going to recruit. Do I get a Persian cav? Do I get a cav unit? It could be a waste of resources, but it could also help late game. Let's grab a Persian cav. It's expensive, but it is what it is. And now we can end the turn. And I do fully expect a all-out assault from the Shah as he tries to reclaim Hatra. As expected... Our garrison did get a bit of replenishment rate, so that's good. The Shah is coming at us with a lot of low-tier infantry in his army. Hopefully he can throw his life away. Some Persian spears, two immortals. No skirmishers, very few. Alright, they're bringing in the three, six immortals. Five range. Alright, that's quite a hefty force, but let's see if we can maintain our achievement list for another battle. Of sorts, but they would surely be happier counting coins or whores than fighting. Let's be at them then. Time for us. Alrighty, welcome everybody to the Battle of Hatra, one I am fairly confident in, and uh, we are off the bat. The enemy are following their normal path. We've laid quite the deadly trap for them, but we are, remember, dealing with multiple Sassanid hordes, and they're all coming for us. But starting with the Shah and Shah himself is going to be our first target. Which they do kind of get around a good chunk of these stakes. But thankfully we've got quite a few more traps lying in wait. Meanwhile, we have deployed a strong tingent of our garrison up front here to guard against the initial assault and any range units they have. But we have a flanking force waiting and ready to go. Right into the stakes. And there goes the first general. And our archers are free to engage the immortals. An absolutely devastating unit, one that will not be receiving any sort of support today. And the enemy... Don't ask me the physics of how this works, but the enemy are... Uh, maybe the wood is a little... Maybe there's a bit more of a gap than we expect, but... Uh, <laughs> This side is doing pretty well for itself. Uh, unfortunately, our poor cohort is taking a sizable beating to the Anatolian Slingers, but we have our forces moving around to engage them. Meanwhile, the other general, Gaian of Zar, has stationed himself along with more immortals. Ready to go up the edge here. I do apologize if you hear my co-host Winston whining in the background. He's lazy to where he doesn't want to get a toy that is directly in front of his face. But thankfully, the Kev are in javelin range now, and they're going to start receiving quite the beating as they try to break through these barricades. And it is both of their generals, in fact, all stuck on this ledge. And it's e it really is easy pickings, considering we are throwing... Jesus Christ, yeah, that is, that is deadly. We've also got archer fire coming in now, too, because we want to make sure we deal with the uh, enemy over here. And they are breaking through this little sap hideway here, but they're going right into some Vigilates, who, while not the best, they will do pretty well against Cav. 
It does look like they're actually trying to run, but that's not going to last too much longer. As we've utterly decimated the enemy. Meanwhile, this flank over here has completely been secured. The enemy are routed, and man, I bet you wish you didn't take part in this. We are now moving our one cav unit around to deal with the slingers here, making sure they don't come back. While the rest of the assassinated force are going to funnel their way through the gap like they normally do. We do unfortunately need to watch out though. They have a sizable bit of range that, are, that is going to start flooding in. That is all of their generals though routed I believe. All that's left to deal with is just their standard infantry and the immortal forces here. Yeah, these guys. The immortal spear guard. I do believe there are some immortal infantry somewhere. Yes, right here. So they are on their way. Meanwhile, we're going to deploy a rather effective tactic. This poor horse. He's two poor horses in my bed. We're going to deploy a rather effective tactic. We're going to move our archers around onto this hilltop. Because we know the enemy is going to funnel their way into this. So we're going to have our skirmishers in the back here. Meanwhile, it's time we are going to be redeploying our forces to prepare for the next phase of the assault. <laughs> With the waiting phase over... Oh, Jesus Christ, my frames. And also the death that we're causing there. Our forces have been redeployed. And now we are prepared to slog it out against the Persian horde. With all our archer forces concentrating their fire on the lower tier Haspa infantry. Because their general's already incapacitated. And if we start getting some firing morale effects over there, it's really going to weaken their ability to attack. The AI does realize that and they seem to be sending units to try to target our spearmen. So I do love, uh, as much as I love this mod, you can see that there are clearly some issues with barricades actually working. It does look like that unit is already routed, so maybe that has nothing to do with it. But we have a lot of units in reserve. Our archers are already protected by some hillmen who are making swift work of the poor routing enemies here. Very nice. Lovely. They definitely routed the wrong way. Guess we're just gonna let them route. Our first line of defense is slowly falling though. Our Pelt is doing an amazing job of being a extremely effective javelin unit and also being extremely effective in melee, especially against these lower tier units. And our front line, as you can see, we have Vigilates up front to soak up any missile damage and then Pikes protecting them through the lines and then another staunch wall of Pikes really really effective and we are having to deal with some units over here breaking through the fort wall trying to go for our skirmishers but being swiftly beaten back by our armored swordsmen the sassanid levy spears are very they're not a good match for swords Ooh, this guy out here getting some kills by himself right now he's a little outnumbered he might want to pull back. Oh, he's got some friends. He's got some friends. Oh, yeah. His friends are coming to back him up. Well, that's pretty cool. We are sparingly using our archers, though. We are not firing willy-nilly because they have, they have a massive amount of units, and we want to bundle them up. But we are trying to deal with their skirmishers using our one single cav unit, but it is rather deadly as we deal with a lot of their skirmishers are just sitting in the back. Our Peltas are finally getting a little outnumbered here. Starting to waver. Might be time to pull back. Route through friendly lines. 
and let the enemy clash upon spear and pike. And this is just where the brutal onslaught will begin. The Vigilates currently aren't even being touched almost. They are only dying to Pike, and we're just chilling. I love this, actually. Yeah, the, the, the Vigilates are literally just cheering. That is great. I love that. Oh, unfortunately, over here, we are getting some skirmisher fire, which is why our cav forces are trying their best to free up. We had to deal with a uh, levy unit here that got swiftly crushed in a encirclement. And now it's time we move into the city to try and deal with some of these skirmishers. But as you can see, there's a giant blob of infantry here. And a lot of them are immortal units. Our vigilates, though, doing the best they can. They're holding out. And we have set up somewhat of a kill box here, making sure we protect our archers at all costs. And it's time we move... And it's time we move our pikemen up to assist. I do really enjoy this line here, though. <laughs> the fact that the vigilates are barely being touched is just the... You know, icing on top of the cake right here. The worst part about it is they are getting a good bit of throws over here. And unfortunately, our poor skirmishers and horsemen are getting tied up. And these Arminian... Anatolian, my bad. These Anatolian slingers are rather effective in combat. Supported by more slingers and a skirmisher unit, they're going to prove rather deadly. As you can see, you know, our cav are already suffering quite handily, and our poor flanking slingers as well are taking an absolute beating. Need to tie my shoes. Winston decided to untie it. We are trying to deal with our skirmishers, but unfortunately our flanking force is running out of steam. But we've started actively firing into the enemy again, and we are getting a lot of routes. The only thing that's sitting that is actual units, or their high tier units, the immortal forces or the Persian level. But we have broken a good bit. Our forces are single-handedly swiping this side away. Just mainly dealing with some Persian spears. Which are a bit more of a match for our swordsmen. But still not too effective against a staunch pike wall. Which is by far Palmer's most uh, advantageous battle position is the range that we can use versus the pike. It's extremely effective in Rome too. In fact, is that Vigilay unit? It is. That Vigilay unit is still kicking. They're just now routing with 24 men left. This unit has done everything it can to hold out. Glitching themselves out against the wall here, but... They're down to 21 men. All that's left of this main line that they're trying to handle. And now the Vigilates are starting to get some action as the enemy just starts to really try to push through. But even then, they still have to contend with a wall of pikes and a secondary wall of pikes that is not even being touched right now. Unfortunately, though, our flanking forces have been destroyed. We're actually seeing the last bit of them right here. Yes, that is the last bit that just withdrawed. He got the final kill. Sadly, he deals with them. So their last couple of skirmishers are free to attack our line, and they do so with ease on this right flank. Unfortunately. But we still have our skirmishers to play, along with a nice flanking maneuver here that we're going to start deploying. Our 
our Pomeranian cohort here is a bit out extended and must hold off against a good couple of enemies. But they're not going to be alone for long. Oh, I love this. I love the beautiful action. Sorry, guys. Kind of playing with Winston as well. Soaking in the battle. If it wasn't for these pikes, we would not be able to win this. Not to mention the absolute... Okay, the tank in my frames, but the absolute archer span that we have going on. It's really going to cause morale debuffs here. We have our second line of pikes over here, hitting their rear line, slowly trying to reinforce. And kudos these hillmen, a very low tier unit, but they are fighting tooth and nail and holding on rather effectively. Right now they're not doing anything, but uh, our swordsmen trying to flank the enemy in the rear here too. We want to make sure we use the garrison, because they'll replenish no matter what. Ooh, a good kill there. We are starting to get their infantry to turn around, but we've not hit the immortal blob yet. Which, really, we won't need to. Our pikes are doing a fine job of uh, getting rid of the immortal problem. Our Vigilante line is somewhat weakening. But there's plenty of pikes to go around. And the levee forces are routing swiftly. Had to do a, a pike reformation, which the AI does swiftly take advantage of here as we're trying to reform. They charge immediately in and get a lot of good kills on our poor pikemen as they try to reform their line. It was rather scary, because these units are, of course, extremely deadly. But they do get distracted, allowing us to reform our pike wall. And do what we do best. At this rate, though, our archers need to get a little closer to hit this blob. But we are going to start causing some severe morale penalties on these guys. Just like that. With no generals to boot, and as you can see, yeah, the skirmishers really did a number. Uh, man, you s we'll see it in the after action port, but they really did a number on our poor, poor pike. Man, that is rough. I hate seeing this. They received such little combat and were just picked away thanks to the uh, archers. Yeah, the we're going to make note of that in the coming bit of this episode that the skirmishers are a severe problem. Speaking of that, we are running out of ammunition on some of our boys here, so it's time we start flanking the enemy where we can and really start to get in there. But with this flank secured, only a couple of immortals left, there is... No doubt that victory, once again, goes to the Palmerian Empire as we finally get into their rear line and we shatter their resolve. And with it, the Siege of Hatro once again is over and we are victorious. And that is how you do a siege defense. A costly one, but still a victorious one. Unfortunately, I don't think we damaged their immortal forces nearly enough, but we, we sadly lost... The Cav unit. Yeah, we dealt with plenty of them. We did get the Immortal Spear Guard. That's good. Oh, we did actually, in fact, kill most of the Immortal Forces. Ah, it's because they stuck around the longest. Well, that makes sense. Let's make a lot of money from it. And push the Shaw and his forces back. 
And they all, they do, unfortunately, all get new generals, but they don't get any reco uh, recovery rates. And they didn't pull out. All right, Bacterias, once again. The Senate feels that no. attack here. Unfortunately, Bacteria is bringing in three. So, when it comes to the power ratio of the East... Oh no, the Legion of Septus stole. Someone who stole the eagle. How dare you? Yep, Hatra. The Heruli are dead. That's not surprising. Subversion. Yep, sabotage. Yep. Ready for battle. She ranked up though, which is nice. And she yeah. most definitely needs uh yeah, melee defense, I think. For the people. As long as they don't target... Alright, it looks like... Okay, they're bringing a lot of range. We are ready. So we're fine. We're still good. We have plenty of slingers. That's okay. That force dead. Now they could try to converge with two of their we armies. If we fortify, though, we could easily reinforce either side. Well, no, I don't think... No, they can't. They can't go this way. They cannot get to Hatra from Dora Europus. That's good. So those forces are left. The assassins are suffering food problems now, which is amazing. Right? Yep, they are suffering food issues. You're sitting in a positive. Lovely. Let's get... The food's fine. We're not doing anything. Plus six, 240. Or we could just get... That's just plus two, but that tax rate's nice. Uh, we are going to get that, though. Could get another shrine. Agriculture, public order, sanitation. Commerce. So that would help with ports. There are a lot of ports. All sources of wealth, research, or recruitment. Yeah, grab another shrine. I would love to be able to leave this province ASAP. Um, I really don't want us sticking around for long. Just like I really don't want the Galatians sticking around for much longer. Alright, well let's see where that army went in the south here. Alright, they didn't make much progress, but they are sailing closer. Commander. Look to the defenses. We could get some auxiliary camels, and I do think they're going to be the cheapest. We could get some uh, Libyan infantry. That would have been nice to have early on, but I don't think we've got three turns. Plus, I don't really want this force... To get too expensive. Four auxiliary camel spearmen, five archers, five Egypt. Yeah. That's per that's pretty good. Plus a garrison uh well, it's gonna be three. Never mind. It is not going to be a lot. They could in the the problem is they could land at Dispolis down here, or they could try to take Miles Hormos. It's gonna have to be a situation of you know, find out, unfortunately. I do hate that we've allowed Galatia to rebuild, but it is what it is. Sadly, there's just nothing we can do about it at this rate. Just realized side is a bit of a naval port. That's nice. Um, it's all said and done. You're great. They're going to continue suffering food attritions. We don't have a... Hmm. Mm, Glacia has set sail with that force. Good. Y'all have fun. I'd like to grab some really cheap... The more vigilates we have, we can move them to Garrison, Bithynia, and Pontus. Allowing Zenobia to go about her march. Alright, nothing yet. Let's 
they're still suffering food. That's awesome. Yeah, go ahead and convert that because we do not... Oh, I let that finish. Damn, that sucks. Oh, well, it, it's going to give positives, so at least we have that, you know? Plus 20 seems a bit much, though. Buildings, characters, events, military presence. Wow, yeah. That's good with me. You. I think... I don't know if they're going to get a turn of respite or not. So instead of replacing them with Vigilates, we are actually... I think we're going to get some proper Pomerian Spearmen. Four is a good start. I do think we're going to merge at least one Vigilay unit. We're not going to merge. We could merge the Pikes. Eh, we're not going to. The garrison is strong. But it is keeping an army tied down for both of us, at least, you know? Nothing, nothing too negative. Where's our agent at? Keep moving him to Sestafon. Perfect. Perfect. I, like I said, I would love to move Zenobia. But unfortunately, I think if she leaves the region for sure, yeah, we are going to suffer a rebellion. So she is stuck there. Which does suck. But... Palio there is making his way north, and he's going to take the garrison. And nice, the Latin families, we now have them in the positive public order. Lovely. He is 14. Is there anything we can do? No, there's not. Minus two loyalty for two turns. That's fine, we can take that, yeah. Knock that out, it's free. All right. I think we are once again at an end turn. And let, let us see what happens. Would we get 20% or 40% wealth from commerce? We don't have very many commerce buildings, right? No. Alexandria is the most, but we're getting quite a bit from food. All right, yeah, let's end the turn, see what happens at Hatra. Um, fingers crossed. I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Nope, nope. Check marks across the board. Knock on wood, man, I love Rome too. The worst part about, oh, they're coming back. Coming back. All right. Round two, Siege Defense of Hatra, and I'll continue the conversation on the battle map. Or I might, I don't know. Welcome everybody to Hatra once more in this same episode, but just with far, far fewer forces to spare. We've gone for a very similar layout, deploying what's left of our Slinger Detachment still in the range, but the enemy is trying to be very clever here and they're actively trying to go around here, but we're, we're gonna learn some valuable lessons with uh, our garrison today. Of course, their army is coming from this side as well. Everything is weak and deteriorated, but uh, we're st we still need to hold, and we only have a good four pikes to do it with. But a lot of the general did slip by the fort there and into our poor armored swordsmen. Thankfully, a lot of theirs still got uh, disturbed by the barricade. But our archers are, while extremely effective, receiving way too much fire. And there's a horrible bug here with the pathfinding that sends these guys into the wall, which is just terrifying. We do manage to pull them out, but it means they take even more casualties, unfortunately. Yeah, as you see, one good volley, we lose a good 10. 
So we're going to have to leave our poor infantry to to contend with uh, the ranged and their general by themselves. They're going to have to just hold. Because we need our archers elsewhere, and they're taking way too many casualties. We needed to target their skirmishers outright, and we barely get to do so. We are going to speed things up as we... Nothing happens here other than the battle continues on this side, and we are struggling, actually, to hold on. Thankfully, our pikemen are going to do a nice little right angle here, almost, to protect what's left of our garrison. But they will have to hold out. Meanwhile, our own skirmishers have been destroyed by theirs. And I will be right back. Sorry about that cut there, but the lady calls and I must answer. But not much has been missed other than the fact that our poor, poor beleaguered forces over here are being decimated by their skirmishers. And it's getting rather scary. I've had to hide our pikemen to the best of my abilities to keep them out of range of a lot of their stronger units while we deal with this side over here because if we can break them up we'll get some you know what remains of our forces over here and also we will need our auxiliary archers back into the fray they're going to be our winning fight here our pikemen will get decimated if there is no a, a good example right here that is Two volleys, maybe, from the archers. Here's another one. And this poor pike unit is down to 91 men. But we are desperately running low on our forces here. So we need to mop up these units quickly so that we can manage to get a defense going. Which we have set one up here to kind of box the enemy in using our forces as best, as, best of our ability. But... With the amount of skirmishes they have here, it's rather terrifying. We will spill, speed things up as we've decimated the general finally over there. And all that remains now is the slog of defending uh, the temple, basically, here in the center. Getting what remains of our forces back. And sending our archers over here to try to help deal with this flank. This will be a desperate fight for both sides as uh, our armies are all weak. And we really, really need to be careful. Yeah, this is what we don't want to happen. They're going to keep sending in their really weak infantry, which we're going to deal with quickly. but we don't want their range to be able to fire. And they do actually have... They do have immortal infantry, I think. Some... Maybe not. Actually, I lied. Yeah, I forgot. We dealt with a lot of their immortals. We're going to try and get our beleaguered garrison forces up front here to try to soak up the enemy's range and uh, the initial assault. But our poor pikemen are still being hit by their range. So we need to do something about it. Which our hillmen are doing a great job of securing our left flank. Allowing our Persian archers to target... The, the skirmishers, for the most part, seem to be out of ammunition. But these archers are going to take a hot minute to get out of it. So we need to deal with them before they hurt us any more. Yeah, that, that can't be continued allowed to happen. Thankfully, they are just funneling their forces into this little area here. men here didn't even see combat just more and more archer death thankfully our hillmen doing a great job working through these levees and with some archer support it's going to very quickly turn in their favor while the rest of them do target that persian archer in the rear 
trying to knock out their general too because they might have i think this is one general that has not fallen yet or maybe he did we're gonna try and knock him out though just in case our poor garrison forces are doing a great job of holding the front line back from our main one And this right flank here is actually protected by this pike wall, which is great. Yeah, these poor... This is not a pike wall anymore. This is a pike line. This is like 20 men holding a pike and fighting to the best of their ability. But it is working. And we've dealt with that Persian archer unit, I think. We are going to start focusing their forces in here. With most of their range dealt with, it's a really even fight now, thankfully. As long as they don't have any more javelins or any more things like that, we're going to start using fire arrows to demoralize what remains of the enemy. And hopefully knock out this general too if he still exists. These brave Pomerian cohorts fighting to the last man. Fighting for their queen. temple and the courtyard must hold. We're gonna bring our general front face to back up the main line here. We're gonna slowly try to, yeah, close the gap. Really put the pressure on the enemy here. Good poke and a stab there. Yeah, I love that these pikes are just fighting tooth and nail. They really are down to like a good 10 men. Fighting this courtyard. Keeping the enemy at bay. I love it. There goes that pike unit. We're going to move our general up just a little bit more to help out as they're dealing with some immortal infantry there. As you can see, they do have some units in reserve, but no general fire arrows. It's really going to start to demoralize the enemy, and once we deal with a couple more of the immortal forces, victory should be ours at a great cost. We're gonna speed things up and just watch. Yeah, I, I really enjoy pikes. I, I love pikes in Rome too. If it wasn't for pikes, this I don't know. I think we would have lost a long time ago. They're very effective. The absolute slaughter line we have going here. But with the Immortals routing, all that remains are some Persian spearmen and a, yeah, some Persian spears, meaning they are extremely close to breaking and with no general to support the enemy. I think any minute now, we're going to trigger a mass rout. Oh yeah, you look at that, look at that funnel of death right there. That's lovely. We've broken their, their attack. All the remains are these, and uh, the rout ensues, and victory is ours. Alright, so the assets weren't done. They took a good beating. However, we've got a problem. We've only got three back, three pikemen left, including them. Our garrison died four pikes. 
Bacteria has a force here. This is not good. That That's really bad, actually. The Bactrians can't attack. They have the range. Fuck. Oh, they didn't. Oh, they didn't. Yes. Yes. All right, so we do have to do this. I think it'll save after this. The legionaries who were supposed to take care of the sacred object have been brought before you and await your decision on the stolen eldest stolen eagle with solemn expressions of despair. Decimation. E issue a new standard. Conduct a thorough investigation and punish only the soul pardon. Search for the eagle. Search for the eagle. They wouldn't give it up, you know. Aww, son of a bitch. Yeah, events minus eight. How long on that banditry thing? It doesn't say. It just says banditry is an issue. Deal with it. Damn. Well, we will look towards that. The episode has saved here. We have defended Hatra. Thank God the Bactrians didn't attack. That let us get four new fresh Pomeranian Spearmen. Some recovery. That's amazing. Ooh, it was a risky, risky business. Okay, so the assassins have deployed some forces there. All right, awesome. Well, everybody, without further ado, thanks to the battles of Hatra, that is all. I am out of time today. I hope you enjoyed today's episodes, especially those amazing battles. And if you did, like and subscribe as always. But I've been your host, Salty, and my co-host, Winston, and we will catch you all in the next one. Peace out.